Hello folks! Wow, it is very hot. Not only hot, but humid here where we are. I guess that's the south for you. As the days continue, it only gets hotter and hotter and hotter and more muggy and humid. I'm glad we're sort of at the last little leg of our southeast tour. We've been on the road for three and a half weeks to four weeks. It's been a long time, but we still have plenty of things to cover here on the Coverage Project. Where we are is a special place, and if today's location had a theme of sorts, we'll be talking about the idea of things being forgotten. Forgotten people, forgotten locations, forgotten importance. We are walking through what was, hundreds of years ago, a great community, a village, a grand village all over the central and south part of the United States. Native American groups built mounds, and we're still not exactly sure to what significance these mounds were, but we saw them in Tallahassee, right here where we are in the city of Natchez, Mississippi. We find more of these mounds. And that's right, Mississippi, a new state for us here on the Coverage Project. Welcome to State 26, the Magnolia State. Here in the southwest region of Mississippi, the Natchez people, from whom we get the name of the city of Natchez that we're in, inhabited these lands. And when the French first explored and tried to settle these areas for France's colonial empire here in North America. They met these Natchez people and they recorded that this, what is now a empty field with a few mounds, was once the site of a great settlement of the Natchez. And that's why this little park preserved area is named Grand Village of the Natchez. Behind us, is what was considerably the largest mound in this once settlement, where the religious and administrative leader, a hereditary leader, the Great Sun, would have his house up on the top of that mound. And every time the leader passed down to the next generation, a new house for this Great Sun chief would be built. This was the Temple Mound, where many of the Natchez ceremonial rites would take place. Many people in the modern day look at these such mounds across the country and they say, oh, well, it's just a mound. But they're forgetting that this whole field used to be a community of houses that weren't as permanent as the earth that was set there. Sadly, as the French became a little more hostile, in fact a lot more hostile, to the Natchez and the neighboring groups here in Mississippi, sadly these communities had to be abandoned for the safety of these people. They would either get killed here or they would have to flee and abandon their ancestral home. But just imagine houses and dwellings and other such buildings important to the Natchez community. This was just one of many Natchez communities in the area. But just imagine it all. This would have been filled with people walking by. Another thing that's just so fascinating is how in today's American society there are just houses lined up here. Mere feet from an ancient site right here. But getting back to the idea of being forgotten. Sadly enough, the intricacies of the culture of these Natchez people, along with many of the lesser known tribes here in the southeast, were ultimately forgotten about. And it's a shame that these such traditions have no way of being recovered. The knowledge is just lost. So thankfully, the state of Mississippi has preserved as much as possibly can be preserved in these mounds. In 1716, the French established their own little settlement a few miles away from this native settlement, making this place, Natchez, Mississippi, the oldest European settled area in all of Mississippi. This is the oldest place you can go to in the Magnolia State. And after Natchez changed its hands of power a few times through various empires and nations, America ultimately took hold of this area. And under the control of 
the United States. This land was transformed into a major important player in America's economy. And so Natchez stands as a forgotten little city. I guess we should explore a little bit of that downtown I'm talking about. So we're now in downtown Natchez. And two things I noticed straight out of the gate. Very, very calm atmosphere. It is understandable given that it is not a huge city like we've seen in other places, but it's just surprising how calm everything is. And two, I noticed that there is a lot of antebellum architecture. Natchez in Mississippi is one of the best places to find antebellum architecture. It may just be the city with the largest amount in the south. Now why is it so preserved, you may ask? Weren't all these southern cities burned down to the ground? Well, Natchez was one of those few southern cities that avoided this fate by immediately surrendering once they realized that the Union was coming down. Now we're walking on Main Street, and as you'll notice, if we can avoid all the scenery of the cars and such, you'll notice that there are a string of historical buildings that are not antebellum, but postbellum, if you want to call it that. You see 1870 up top, that first building on the corner, 1890s. And this represents the prosperity that Natchez had and maintained. Its economy grew under American control because of uh, cotton and slave trading, which are unfortunate for those times. But that's just what Natchez was. It was a city in Mississippi. It was a slave state. It was part of the Confederacy. So cotton around this part of the state was a big commodity, which they could you know, distribute across the country. But after the Civil War, there was still a rising prosperity here in the city. And what I am here to tell you is that all these buildings that we see, very, very historical. You know, the colorful painted walls of the buildings we see here in Natchez sort of represent the glamour that was still present even after the Civil War. This community experienced its first downturn, really, in the 20th century when the railroads began to supersede all the traffic coming from the riverboats, because Natchez is right next to the Mississippi River. the Mississippi River and its impact on Natchez to become a commercial hub of the South. I don't think I can put it into words as well as I can show you a picture of just what I'm talking about. Take a look at this. Now we've seen this river at the level of its surface, but I don't think yet we have seen the Mississippi River from above. And it's a wondrous sight. Look at this. The views of St. Louis and Baton Rouge have nothing on this view. This is the river that made Natchez what it was with the advent of the steamboats allowing large ships to deliver cargo long distances across this navigable river. Natchez ultimately turned so wealthy. You notice how the river is so close to us, yet we are so high up? Well, it's no accident that Natchez was situated right here and developed in this way. The French were the first to settle an area, but it was the Spanish who then acquired these lands and made Natchez the capital of this territory. 
And once the Americans got their hands on Natchez and the Mississippi Territory, they were like, yeah, the Spanish knew exactly what they were thinking. We love these strategic bluffs as a way to protect ourselves from the Mississippi River, but also utilize our location for trade and prosperity. So yeah, this was the capital of Mississippi, the first capital before the modern day capital of Jackson, Mississippi. This was the original hot spot to settle along the Mississippi River. In fact, the state of Mississippi is, well, obviously named after the Mississippi River. with its source being in the northern forests of Minnesota and flowing all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. The Mississippi River is America's most important river, definitively. And I make an important note of this because the Mississippi River is what allowed America to turn a largely agrarian-based society, a loose collection of states, into a world superpower through its grid-like system of tributaries, allowing the nation to have a central trade route, if you will. Not just one trade route, but a whole system of trade routes. This centralization of trade allowed America to develop into this world superpower come the beginning of the 20th century. And it's something that a lot of other countries could never boast because their geography did not allow it. What's this? It's a whole nother part of the city below the hill. Welcome to Natchez under the hill. Aptly named, I might say so. Because of the immense length of the Mississippi River, people like to divide the river at whole into a couple different parts. Where we are now, well, this is the lower Mississippi. By the way, that's Louisiana, if any of you are curious. Yeah, the Mississippi River is a great dividing line in the US, not only between two or three different states at a time, but considerably the eastern and western part of the US. This lower Mississippi River was the most substantially useful part of this river. Here, the conditions allowed people to trade throughout the South. And that's why the North and the South fought so bitterly in the Civil War over this region, because if you control this part of the Mississippi, well, you can control a lot. What comes in and out of the country, and a lot of the trade that happens in this fertile area. And so in the early 1800s, you would see a lot of these boats dock up on this shore, keel boats, sailboats, and of course, the almighty steam-powered river boat. And they would dock up here and they would, you know, have a good time on this port area. Let's just say people threw morals right out the window. You could see here back in the day a lot of drinking, gambling, and let's just say other illicit things we're not going to talk about here on the coverage project. But you could see, you could almost ideally take yourself back in time to the days when boats were lined up here and while people were on their ways for whatever jobs they had with the trade industry, they would have a nice little break here, mingle with the people. It's a beautiful sight today with the river over here and the old buildings behind us. It's a pleasant sight. You know, it's a darn shame that for a city like Natchez, which was once one of the wealthiest cities in America at a point in history that it's relatively obscure today in terms of all the other places to visit. I don't think many people are saying, wow, I'm clamoring to go to Natchez, Mississippi, even though it's got plenty of culture and charm to it. Anyway, let's wrap up our time here in Natchez, but I think there's a better place to end the video off. Well, although we seem to be at another field, this is actually an elevated field, a mound. And this is no ordinary mound, unlike the mound we saw at the beginning of today and the previous mounds we've seen in other adventures all across America. This is actually the second largest mound in America, only after the tallest mound found in Cahokia. It was 
on these grounds that the ancestors of the people we call the Natchez built this entire thing from Earth. And for something as large as this huge thing, this might be several acres, it takes more than just, you know, a hunter-gatherer society. It takes a whole complex culture and society with different roles to develop something like this because this, you know, the manpower required to bring all this earth to one place and build it in such a way like this, well, it takes years. And so this here Emerald Mound is a very important and sacred site. Not only is this site sacred and significant to the Natchez, but it's also sacred and important to other native groups who come here on a routine basis to pay their respects. It suggested that this emerald mound was used for not only ritualistic purposes, but also for spectator sports. You could see tribal warriors playing their culture's ball sports and competitions, and it would get brutal, but you could see that great sun chief looking down on everybody toiling and competing at these sports for glory. I just want to show you the sheer size of this mound. Those trees in front of us, they don't sprout from this level. It goes all the way down here. I mean, this whole thing is humongous. It's clearly the largest mound I've seen in my lifetime. But there are countless mounds and mound sites all throughout the US from this shared network of Mississippian cultures. But I feel it's my own personal duty on the coverage project to show you what Mississippi was before Mississippi was a state or a territory or a colony or whatever. This was Mississippi hundreds of years ago. But anyway, how is that for our debut into the Magnolia State? By the way, what do you think of Mississippi when you hear of the state? I mean, first and foremost, I think it is necessary that we give the state of Mississippi our respects, that we are able to count on time, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. I wonder if Mississippi started that whole thing. I wonder if the people of Mississippi have a leg up on all of us in the other states of America, just for that. Well, of course, aside from that, you have the Mississippi River, Mississippi's namesake river, which is definitely an important part of Mississippi's history and culture overall. We can't forget that like the state of Tennessee, Mississippi is a huge state with regard to the history of music. You can thank this state that we have so many genres of music from the blues to rock and roll. I mean, for goodness sakes, Elvis Presley was born here. You might also think of the many, several Civil War battles and battlefields that are here in the state of Mississippi, preserved to the best of the state's ability. Hint, hint, might be a future video on that. This goes without saying, Mississippi, people's perceptions of it, not too great. I mean, there's a saying, thank God for Mississippi. And that's sort of uh, a disparaging remark, basically meaning, well, thank goodness we're not that state. It's sadly overlooked as a travel destination, but if you come here, you will be rewarded with several hidden gems, like Natchez, the forgotten city along the Mississippi River. Well, with that, that's all I gotta say. I had a great time in Natchez, Mississippi. What a great debut into this state. We will continue our adventures in Mississippi. Not gonna reveal exactly where we're going, because that's the fun of it. You'll just have to see. So, standing here at the Emerald Mound, what could be considered a very sacred site for the original inhabitants of Mississippi. With future prospects of this state to be enjoyed. More travels to come. I will see you at the next location.